Aye, right, okay, second part, right. So, do, gonna be looking at the calculations mainly in this one. Um, so I'm just gonna, before I start with the actual buffers, give you an example of one which, well, it's phrased in such a way I imagine people will find it difficult to pick out the information what you need. So I've written it up here, it's from the June 2012 paper for Chem 4, if you do want to look at it. So it states a 25 cubic centimetre sample of 0.085 molar solution of HCl was diluted with water until the pH was 1.25. Calculate the final volume. Right, so where to start with that? Because you're going to be using a few different equations. So it's saying calculate the final volume. It's giving you some information about what you've started with and it's giving you a pH value across here. So calculating final volume, what's the normal way you work out volume? Okay, so that's the equation what you've seen for working out volume. So obviously we need to know concentration, we need to know moles. Now we know the amount of moles of HCl in there because as we can see, We've got this. We've got 25 cubic centimetres of 0.085 molar. When we dilute something, we are not neutralising it. So the amount of H plus ions which was in there initially will still be in there at the end. Just with more water, there'll be a bit more spread out. We have not added a base to neutralise them. So we can work out the actual amount of moles there. And specifically, it's the H plus what we are after. Again, the moles for the HCl will obviously be the same as the moles for the H+, because with it being a strong acid, it'll almost completely dissociate. So however many moles of these, it will break up to give us um, almost exactly that. So the value for that comes out as... two point one two five times 10 to the minus 3. So again, that is now the moles of HCl, which is in this solution. So we know the moles. Now what we need to work out is the final concentration. We know the initial concentration, but we added some water. So that, that will actually dilute the sample. So this concentration is no longer correct for at the end. How are we going to work out that? Well, look at the other piece of information we've been given. We've been given pH. So how can you use pH to find concentration? Well think of what the equation for working out pH is. pH equals minus log concentration of hydrogen ions. Now what did I just say there? If we can work out this, because it's a strong acid, the values will be almost equal in terms of the amount of moles in there, so the concentrations. So, take the anti-log of the pH. Remember, negative as well up there. And that comes out as... zero point zero five six two molar concentration so now we know our concentration of hydrogen ions and we know our amount of moles of hydrogen ions so we can work out the volume so obviously just simple rearrangement of the equation here Uh, 
and there is our final volume. So as you can see, it matches correct with what you've been told in that you diluted with water, so you added water. So obviously your final value should be bigger than your initial value there because you've added stuff. So there's a, a one, as I said, a bit wordy in terms of figuring it out. A lot of these, you do really need to read the question and understand the equations which you've learned thus far. Okay, next bit. So I'm going to do a weak acid calculation since I didn't really do one of those properly in the previous video, just in case you are having a bit of trouble with the actual numbers from it. So there, nice and straightforward. Calculate pH of a 0.85 molar solution of ethanoic acid. So ethanoic acid, weak acid. And you'll always, well, you'll either be asked to work out Ka or given it. So write your equation down for the start. So there's what we know so far for the equation. If we put the numbers in, and I'm just going to rearrange as well. Sorry, that'll be times. So again, remember what I said in the previous video, because with being a weak acid it only partially dissociates, the number which will be subtracted from this will be almost negligible, so you can just use the actual concentration value there. So once you've worked out that, square root it, there is your concentration of hydrogen ions. Once you know your concentration of hydrogen ions, the value in there and there is your val where there is your pH value for a weak acid so not too hard as I said the key bit is just remembering that square to actually square root it okay so buffers so what is an actual buffer well it's something which is put in there to resist pH change your blood acts as a buffer. If your blood changed pH by about 0.4, I think it is, either side, you die. Um, things like shampoo as well, that's a buffer. Uh, baby lotion, eye drops. Anything where you don't want the pH to change because it's going to irritate or actually cause damage, you will usually have a buffer in there to try and resist change. A buffer works basically on the equilibrium principle. In terms of, uh, if I could put an example up. So a buffer is made, we're going to look at weak acid buffers. So a weak acid buffer will usually have a pH just below 7. Obviously it's an acid one. It'll be made from a weak acid and its salt. So something like ethanoic acid and sodium ethanoate. OK, 
Okay, so I put high conk and then low conk under this one. This will be the sodium ethanoate. Usually you'll see it as the, like that when it's added, but obviously it's gonna break up into the ions in solution. So that's why you'll see it as the, the COO minus there. The weak acid across here, the ethanoic. So if you add an acid, so if you add H plus, well the H plus can just stick on there and go back to this form. So that will remove your hydrogen ions. Whereas if you add a base, well a base will start removing some of these. If you remove the concentration of hydrogen ions, then the ethanoic acid here, think back to equilibrium principle, doesn't like it when you lower the concentration of this, so it will release more. So it keeps your actual concentration of this steady in terms of the pH. So a question could be along the lines of this. So calculate the pH of a buffer solution made from So there, all the information we need. Now, the equation which you will use will just be the, the weak acid equation. Well, the, the, the full one, not the simplified one we looked at with the H plus squared. So there, we are going to use that. This is our weak acid, and here is our salt, which we put in. There is the concentration of hydrogen ions. So this is obviously what we are looking for, because it's asked us to work out pH. Again, we're going to feed it back into that equation of pH equals minus log concentration hydrogen ions. So, plug the numbers in. Quite straightforward. Hopefully you should be able to see how to do that. So we've got the 1.2. 7 times 10 to the minus 5 there, multiply this over, and then obviously divide this. So times 0 0.2 molar ethanoic acid, there we go. And then divide, bringing this over, 0 0.2 molar as well. So cancel, cancel. So 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 is our concentration of hydrogen ions. You would just now plug that into that old equation. And that gets you the pH of a buffer solution made from a weak acid and one of its salts. So that's normally the simplest level of questioning. Check on time there. Next one is one where you actually start with a weak acid and you add a base. So the base will neutralize some of that weak acid. In neutralizing the weak acid, it will form the actual salt. So rather than adding that sodium ethanoate directly, what we are going to do is add some sodium hydroxide, which is going to react with the ethanoic acid and actually form the sodium ethanoate that way. So it's slightly different, but the numbers aren't too hard to get around.
Okay, I've just made up the Ka for this buffer because I just made up half the numbers to go with it as well. So no idea if it's anywhere near correct, but we can still do the calculation based on it. So as you can see, yeah, we've started with the weak acid. We've added some of the actual base, so it's going to neutralize it. So what you need to be thinking of is the equation for it. So the sodium ethanoate there, so that's going to split up into the solution, that will be the COO minus which you've seen previously. So work out the amount of moles of these you had initially, so the moles. So in terms of, we know the concentration, we know the volume, um, so it's 0.22 for this. 0 0.04 for the sodium hydroxide. Obviously zero here, we haven't added them yet, they haven't reacted. So when we mix them together, this will be looking at how many they are, there are at the end. So as you can see, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So all of this is gonna be used up reacting with that. So we're gonna take this value away from this. So we will end up with 0.18. Obviously, because 0 0.04 of this have reacted, again, one-to-one -one ratio, we will form 0 0.04 of the salt across there. So once we've got these values, we need to know the concentrations because Remember, square brackets there. We need to know the concentrations to plug in. So look at the total volume. 80 plus 220. Total volume, 300 cubic centimetres. So we know the actual amount of moles. So we are going to do moles divided by volume to get us the concentration. So effectively we are going to divide them all by 0.3 because the 300 divided by 1000 to convert a decimeter cubed. So once we've got the concentrations, put them in there. So we will have the concentration for this from here. So that will be that. We've got the concentration here which if I just give a double tick, we'll go in there. We were told K at the start, so that value is there. Bit of rearranging again. That lets us work out the concentration of the hydrogen ion. And then again, pH equals minus log concentration hydrogen ion. And there you go. There is your pH of a weak buffer made by using a weak acid and neutralizing with a base. Okay.